finally it rises. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Attic, back with another episode. If you're listening via a podcast app, thank you. I can't uh, thank you enough. Uh, please also consider going on YouTube and find that us just search Lincoln Addict and you can watch a little bit enhanced experience. Not only will you see video, but I'll also be kind of demonstrating via sharing my screen and some images of what I'm talking about. So certainly no matter how you're consuming the content, I can't thank you enough. As I mentioned, I really want to get into this episode and uh, talk about um, a bunch of stuff. Primarily this episode, I'll be talking about the 62 uh, Lincoln Continental aesthetics and what, like I said, what I'm going to do here, you'll have a little bit of an enhanced experience. I'm trying to kind of dial in how the information is presented that way. It's, you know, more easily digestible, I think is the word. Um, I'm here in my studio. You can see some of the pop culture stuff behind me. I'm a big old school BMX fan. I kind of grew up in that era. So I've got some of my rad items. We celebrated Rad Day yesterday on March 21st because that film came out on 321 of 1986. So uh, you can also see a few of my Lincoln stuff behind me, Hot Wheels, renderings, things like that. So again, a little bit of an enhanced experience via YouTube. If you're looking at the screen, this is episode 38 of Lincoln Attic Podcast, and what I'm going to do on this episode is really a very similar episode to the 1961 exterior aesthetics. I'm going to kind of do a deep dive, if you will, just talking about the exterior on the 62 Lincoln Continentals, and I hope that you guys will enjoy it. Um, I would ask that if there's things that I don't cover or that you're aware of, as always, please chime in. Uh, if you're on YouTube, it makes it super easy to interact there, uh, which I love, and I do my best to respond to pretty much every comment. If you're on, for instance, uh, Spotify, which I love, you can also, I think you can leave a rating there, and I believe you can submit feedback, but I don't know how easy it is to kind of interact there. I know Podbean, many of you listen there, that allows you to go back to the beginning and with Podbean, I think you can leave comments, but certainly it'll be easier to interact uh, or the easiest, I would say, via YouTube. Uh, I do have a, a great in-depth presentation that I'll be covering here shortly. I do want to get into some of the, the normal items that I cover on the podcast. I want to thank Jeff at Devious Customs for the continued support. Uh, what I will do here is uh, reinforce that if you go to deviouscustoms.com. You'll see this is the main landing page here. You see this custom 65 Lincoln Continental. Now, I do realize that uh, custom Lincolns are not for everyone, uh, but Jeff has a good mix of parts available, uh, depending on if you're a purist or kind of want to stay more along the traditional uh, lines of keeping your car stock for the most part. For instance, he has windshields available 66 through 69. But when you scroll through here, if you're looking to do a resto mod, an engine swap, maybe upgrade your alternator, uh, these are super popular. The billet switch panels, uh, many of us have pot metal for those factory switch panels, and they just get nasty over time. They're costly to get re-chromed, so you have some options here. And, uh, of course, one of his hot selling items is the air suspension kit. So if you want to add adjustable suspension via air bags, you can find the kits here. Also, he's got the 6465 Continental door control unit. So uh, with the switches and all that stuff, it kind of helps him modernize a little bit. And um, you can pretty much hit Jeff up and he will get you squared away. So I want to give a huge shout out to him. Now... Uh, when we go to the next item, uh, I want to give for our Lincoln Life updates, right? So I kind of try to hit upon the Lincoln community and some of the key things that's going on out there um, at the time. And one of those items is Chino and Sons. They are continuing to offer new products. So I need to do an unboxing. I ended up getting a center console from them for my 65. And this is their Instagram. Now, if you're not on Instagram... I would suggest that you do join. There's a great community out there, very similar to Facebook, but you can really link up with a lot of different companies and people through Instagram. Now, 
what you're going to see here is Chino and Sons is all spelled out. Uh, you, uh, one of the key things I want to mention is, of course, they're doing these center consoles. You can hit them up if you want, you know, cup holders or specific size for, you know, a car stereo. Uh, they make those. And again, I got one in a raw form, an MDF, uh, kind of a wood type form. And that, um, that's something I'm going to do an unboxing on the channel here in the near future to talk a little bit about it. But they're also doing these deck lids. So, there is someone else in the marketplace making these reproduction deck lids. And um, I believe, you know, going from memory that Chino and Sons basically said that, hey, we want to enter the market as well. That's a good thing because it's going to help spur competition. And this post here, which was 12 weeks ago, says, hey, fam, excited to announce we've successfully test fitted the 63 Lincoln Continental prototype fiberglass trunk lid on two different 63s. Our team's been making fiberglass lids for CJ, Pony, and Classic Industries for years. We made them a little bigger so your team can shave and custom fit. And they talked about there at that time for the first batch was going to be like just um, a below two, $2,000 with six weeks to ship. Now, it may seem like a lot. My understanding is the other person that's been in the market um, has a, a more expensive price. Now, you might be thinking why would I want to put a fiberglass deck lid on my vehicle? Well, the reason is many of these deck lids are pretty much drying up and you just can't find them. They're specific for the convertibles. I've talked a little bit about that, especially with the 61 aesthetics. And we talked about how they're rear hinged and where those hinges are at. Uh, th it's just a different, it's a different deck lid. So it's a specific part for that particular year in most cases and um, especially for the convertibles or the sedans. If yours is rusted out you, you, and you need one and you can't find one, that's why you would have to have some sort of option, and this is a great option for you. In addition to that, Tony and I have seen, and I'm sure Chris done as well, is you'll have a car that's a solid, really nice car, but the deck lid is rusted out. I've talked about on the channel how the adhesive that was used underneath that deck lid where that skeleton is at, as well as the hood, uh, tends to hold moisture. So over the course of time, if a car has sat outside or it's just, like in Florida, there's high humidity. Uh, unfortunately, Chris Dunn at Lincoln Land, Tony, myself, you know, all of us, we've dealt with the little bubbling that starts on the deck lid, right? And it will get worse over time. You know, there's ways to fix it. You can take your deck lid off. You can have it dipped. You can have a body shop go through and scrape all that stuff out from in there. But certainly, if your deck lid is shot and your car is great, well, you know, you, you can't cruise around your car with a, you know, no deck lid, right? So this is a great opportunity for people that are in desperate need. Sometimes there'll be a car that's a borderline parts car that's all there. I'm sure Mario's dealt with this. And then you're like thinking, man, if I just had a deck lid, this car would be sellable. It could be put back on the road, right? So hence why I wanted to reinforce the good folks over at Chino and Sons. Again, they've they've always kind of looked out for me. They've sold some cars in the past. But I think one of their big things is uh, really trying to help uh, the Lincoln community with different parts, different pieces, and uh, they're good, good kinfolk out there. This was one of the cars, I think, in the past they had for sale. So uh, certainly uh, look them up and uh, let them know that Lincoln Attic sent you. Gino and Sons, uh, this update for Lincoln Life Updates this week is brought to you by our kinfolk at Colorado Custom Wheels. Now, I often talk about Colorado Custom Wheels, but I do want to show you, if you're on YouTube, uh, Colorado Custom with no S. Dot com on their main page. Check this out. They've got two Lincolns, a 70 MK3 and a 65. Uh, beautiful cars. And uh, this is pretty cool. If you go to all wheels and then premium, you're going to see here they have several different wheels, including the extended Lincoln. So this is ideal for smaller sizes, under 20s. And then they have the Lincoln replica, perfect to complement your Lincoln. Now, some people are going to want the look of a bigger wheel, so they may go with the extended series, which you could, if you take a look here, you're going to see that it, it kind of makes it look like it's bigger um, versus uh, here, the Lincoln replica is going to be more along the lines of the factory hubcap. These are billet aluminum. They're not cheap. I totally get it. 
but this will eliminate the hubcaps flying off. Plus, it adds, you know, to me, some elegance to the car. You know, wheel covers are great. I mean, I like them. I still have them on my Red 65. They have the kind of little modification so that they won't fly off. That's a whole other story. But certainly on my 64, I had to have something custom. And this is basically what I have on it is a 17-inch wheel. And again, it looks just like the hubcap. The valve stems are on the back side, which is super cool. I've got a little bit of a, a, a wide white wall on it for the most part. Uh, the biggest I could run for a 17, and uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Shout out to the kinfolk at Colorado Custom Wheels. All right, next, we're going to move into Lincoln's for Sale. And if I haven't mentioned this car prior, I want to go ahead and cover it now. Uh, this is brought to you by our, our family at Griot's Garage. It's G-R-I-O-T-S Garage. And uh, let me give a, a quick shout out. Right now, they have 20% off liquid car care products if you use the key code liquid, L-I-Q-U-I-D, 2-0. So go on Griot's Garage. These make fantastic, whether it's a Mother's Day or Father's Day gift or just something in general that you're looking to restock. Uh, it's pretty cool, and uh, definitely give them a follow if you can via Instagram. They're on YouTube. They do a ton of uh, these different product reviews, but they also do a lot of tech tips on how to ensure that you're doing things correctly. And I always jokingly say I'm not an expert when it comes to this stuff, so I love kind of learning new tips about uh, said product. So in the past... I may have mentioned this, but uh, somebody I know, Jared, uh, he's a, a friend of mine. He is selling, he's decided to sell his 69 Lincoln Continental sedan. So this is the car here. Uh, it is mostly factory other than, of course, adjustable suspension, and it has the wider white wall wheel or white, white wall tire. Uh, I posted this via my Lincoln Continental sales on Instagram. And although I haven't really been focused on buying and selling or maybe even helping people buy and sell just because of the time balance that I've, you know, dealing with these days. Uh, since I knew Jared, I told him, hey, uh, I'll get the word out. We'll post it via social media, which I did do. Uh, th uh, the interior was redone with, uh, I think it's mostly stock, but I believe the seats were redone with the uh, factory material. So you could sometimes end up finding that stuff. And this is a good example of someone that for the most part, kept the car relatively stock other than, of course, the adjustable suspension in the center console that he put into it. Uh, the trunk is mostly stock as well. You see the two red tanks, one on each side, but you also see the Vire compressors. You know, you could argue and say kind of a basic air suspension setup, which is great. It does have the, it looks like aluminum hard lines kind of coming from the VU4 AccuAir um, over to the left side, over to the right side. So having the two tanks, uh, definitely helps because it's a big, heavy car. This is what the car looked like originally. Uh, it's a car that is not a, a rust bucket by any means. Um, there are some additional photos that I have. You know, you can see underneath this car. looks like a BC Fab kit. Um, it's, you know, it's not fully detailed underneath the car, but certainly if you go through these photos like I have, there's nothing that's really kind of rusted out or anything like that. It does look like possibly at one point the floor pan was done, which is not uncommon on these cars. Uh, the 67 that I had, uh, the floor pan, I think both of them had to be done uh, over the course of time with boots or people's shoes. They would kind of hold water under that jute material that's under the carpet. And you will often see people that have to redo, but I believe this one was redone at least on, uh, looks like the passenger side. But you can see from the work that's been put into it, it's not bad. That's the driver's side that looks factory. But, uh, you know, those are the type of things you need to look at. And I, I'm of the mindset that, you know, these cars are not always perfect, but, you know, you just want to get one that has good bones. This was one blemish, and his friend that is a great painter, he said, hey, if somebody ends up buying the car and they want me to fix it, like I can fix that for you. But that is one blemish that's on there. Uh, there are a couple videos that I have access to as well, and I've shared those via Instagram, Lincoln Continental Sales um, on there is where I kind of post different cars for sale uh, or cars that I know of. So check it out again. Thanks to Griot's Garage for the continued support. We had Nick on, who is now the head guy at the company. I think his dad's going to kind of semi-retire. But uh, Griot's Garage, 
so many great products, great people. He's a Lincoln guy. How can you not love those products? Next, I want to talk Lincoln's and TVs, movies, music videos, and album covers. And I was texting with my friend, my brother from another mother, Tony Boss Bolin, the other day. And this is one that he and I have talked about in the past. He actually has this one, I Do Not, in my collection at this time. But this is a 1976 album by Diana uh, Trast, T-R-A-S-T. Believe Me Now or Believe Me Later. So don't know anything about the artist. Uh, I do collect vinyl, but this is one that I would have never known about. I think Tony was at a record store one day, or maybe Chris Dunn at Lincoln Land mentioned this to him. The front cover, you really can't see anything other than her and her red dress. The back of the LP, also known as a record, is um, it, you could see they're like in a junkyard. And you see right here, if you look closely where I have the arrow, if you're on YouTube, uh, that is a 66 Lincoln Continental. Looks like a sedan. How do we know it's a 66? Well, you could kind of try to count the bars on the grill, but it's way easier to tell because it has the Lincoln Star on it. Yeah, somebody could have went as far as putting the star on a 67. I highly doubt it. More than likely, it's a 66 Lincoln Continental. So kind of an oddball one, but uh, definitely in Tony's collection. I think Chris has a copy as well from Lincoln Land, I believe, uh, or maybe he knew about it, but kind of cool and oddball one. I'm sure you could pick this record up for not that much. Uh, I doubt it's a highly sought after record if you were looking to add it to your collection. Lincoln's and Movies, TVs, uh, music videos, and album covers is brought to you by our family at Steel Rubber. And uh, we had the head guy of Steel Rubber on in the past. And I want to reinforce, I always talk about this. When you go to Steel Rubber, S-T-E-E-L-E, rubber.com, you can go to uh, catalogs or you can go to product lines. When you select automotive, you can select the year. So I'm going to go 1964, L for Lincoln, it's going to pick Continental, and then you have the sedan or convertible option. When you select Submit, there's 47 items found currently for the 64 Lincoln Continental four-door convertible. I always uh, talk about, you know, I like to try to stay organized. I went through and copied these part numbers, and I put the price into a spreadsheet, and then I made a column. Do I need this? Do I not need it? Do I need it now, or is it something down the road that would be a nice to have? And I was able to kind of determine how much I was going to have to spend based upon what I needed right now. And that's what I did. Uh, they do have a body weather strip kit. Uh, this 34 piece body weather strip kit includes the major weather strip components needed for the body of your classic restoration vehicle. $3,200. Now I know some people go, wow, that's a lot. These materials are not easy to make. They're not cheap to make. Also, Another key component is this is going to help add value to your car. If you've got a very nice car and you open the door and you kind of inspect the weather stripping and it doesn't look great, know that if you go the extra mile and you save those receipts and you include that with the sale of your vehicle down the road, I'm of the mindset that that's a huge win to the new seller or to the new buyer. So, uh, again, they've got a ton of different stuff. They've got the cow drains. They've got the taillight to body gaskets. Super awesome products, great people, uh, just just an awesome company, and I love representing and, and just trying to be uh, a promoter of their brand. Uh, you can find them on Instagram, Steel, S-T-E-E-L-E, -E Rubber, and also on Facebook. Of course, I did mention the website. Okay, next, uh, this I want to get into the main topic of this uh, episode, which is the 1962 Lincoln Continental Exterior aesthetics. Now, if these continue to go well, my goal is possibly to go through 69. Maybe then we'll do um, an engine bay uh, deep dive, uh, an interior deep dive, you know, some of the other components um, throughout, uh, you know, what, you know, the things you can imagine, right, that I would potentially cover. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to my presentation that I have here, and then we'll go through this again. Stick with us to the end if you can. If you're listening via a podcast app, thank you. Uh, check us out on YouTube. Uh, when you watch these videos on YouTube, it helps my channel, uh, which is a huge help to me, and I appreciate it. But it also, it's giving you the extra uh, presentation, if you will. So, uh, 1962 Lincoln Continental Exterior 
design aesthetics uh, or just exterior aesthetics. Now, this segment is brought to you by Lincoln Land. Um, I want to thank them for the continued support. Chris and team over in Clearwater. Chris has been in business over 40 years. And if you need parts for your Lincoln, don't get scammed via social media. Now, there's great people on social media, right? There's different Facebook groups. There's different key sellers, you know, the John Lyman's, the Tony Boss Bolins, and so on and so forth. There are good people. But I always encourage, you know, call Lincoln Land first. See if they have it. They may not have everything you need, but they have a ton of it. So thanks to Chris and team. Now, um, I'm going to go through this uh, 1962 Lincoln Continental Overview. Uh, even though there, or even though there was evidence to suggest the public was slow to accept the new Lincoln Continental design introduced one year earlier, changes to the 62 models were kept to a minimum. Most of the areas addressed were in response to concerns from the 1961 owners, who generally loved their cars and had relatively few issues with them. Lincoln knew their design was a winner as there was evidence it had already had an impact on the competition. One concern was Lincoln's smaller size, the implication of which was the smaller equaled less uh, substantial. Uh, So Lincoln answered that by advising that the Lincoln was the heaviest of the top luxury cars, and this added weight was indicative of more extensive soundproofing, better body construction, and higher quality. That's the key. The 61 and 62 models were so alike, some were a bit surprised, but this move was an intentional one on Lincoln's part, which advised the updates and refinements were made to mechanical components and accessories to improve the quality of the car instead of just changing uh, its appearance. If anything, the 1962 models were cleaner than the inventory, or in the um, uh, cleaner than the introductory 61 cars. Of course, that's up for debate. Most of the visual changes were up front. The high bar front bumper and grill assembly was replaced by a more traditional front bumper that was placed below the grill, running from side to side. A slim chrome bar ran the center of the grill between the headlights, emphasizing Lincoln's width. The headlights were raised about an inch to improve roadway lighting at night, and the grill pattern became a series of floating rectangles, replacing the egg crate crate, uh, pattern used previously. The two massive bumper guards from the 61 were eliminated completely. The result, many feel the appearance of the 62 model is even more beautiful than that of the 61. So if you're on YouTube, let me know what you think. Like, do you think... So many people love the 61. Do you think the 62 edges it out? Me personally, I like the 62 more because the front end isn't my favorite on the 61. Again, I'm not dissing it. That's just my personal opinion. Other exterior changes included an updated rear deck grille, which was now an aluminum insert featuring a smaller rendition of the Continental Star emblem, but which still mimicked the front grille pattern. The star emblem was removed from the wheel covers as well, which uh, I talked about recently, and was replaced with the name Continental in all caps, spelled out in a circle center section. The standard white wall tires had a narrower narrower white band for 62, a sign of the times as automakers abandoned the wider stripes common during the 50s. Many of you have chimed in via social media to tell me that. These somewhat minor appearance changes imparted a styling continuity that was essential in maintaining resale value, as um, uh, which was an important consideration for someone purchasing uh, a car new. You have to think about back in those days, you know, sixty five hundred, seven thousand, not as much financing options that you have now. It was a lot of money, so someone that was going to slap down six or seven grand, they wanted to make sure that they were going to be able to potentially resell their car for a decent amount. Convertibles received attention to the top, the wider and flatter roof bows in a squared off upper rear door glass area to provide a cleaner appearance with the top up. It's harder for me to kind of see that in photos, but if you really kind of take a look at it, you'll kind of notice it. It's easier to see a little bit in person, but very minor in the grand scheme of things. So as we move forward, 
Uh, here's what I'll reinforce. So we know the 61 Lincoln Continental, there were 25,164 of these produced. Uh, that was uh, basically the convertible, the sedan, and technically there were four hard tops. The 62 Lincoln Continental totals 31,061. So that was the second year model. The sales increased as you would expect, and uh, that was a good thing, a good sign of the times. So 62 Lincoln Continental, uh, 5,546 more sedans in 62 versus 61 were produced. 355, not a lot more, but 355 more convertibles in 62 versus 61 were produced. Bottom line is increased sales is a good thing, although they probably expected to sell even more. Now, keep in mind, these cars were not cheap. $6,500 in 1962 is about $66,000 in 2024. But again, I would argue even if you just, it doesn't mean that the car would have been that expensive or that cheap. $66,000 is a lot, but it doesn't mean that it, it equates exactly because I think nowadays, if you go and you look at a car, if you're in the the thirty to forty thousand dollar range, you know, sixty six thousand is a huge jump. But we do have a lot more financing options available now. You know, people can finance cars, I don't know for how long, but I know you can finance for six, probably seven, eight, nine years, I would think. And, you know, back then that just wasn't a thing. So, you know, for someone to slap down that much money potentially or write a check. I've seen some receipts where people traded in a vehicle or they put like 500 down and then they owed 6,500 or $6,200 remaining balance. So it definitely was not cheap. 62 Lincoln Continental. These are a couple of photos from the Lincoln Motor Company dealership brochure or various ads. Um, but uh, for the most part, many of these are either scanned or I own one for myself. And, you know, some of these images are available on the Internet. This is one of the brochures, and it talks about uh, presenting the Lincoln Continental for 62. So these brochures, I think they're a kind of a big thing. Nah, I wouldn't say they're a big thing now. When a new vehicle comes out, like a Silverado or something, you can get a brochure from the dealer, and I'm sure people still collect them. But back then, it was it was totally different because there was no internet, obviously, and this was your way to maybe take this home to maybe sell your significant other on the fact that, hey, I want to buy this car. But it goes on to say, dot, 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 its hallmark is surpassing good taste. The classic beauty, which is the Lincoln Continentals exclusively, uh, does not depend upon ostentation. Uh, this is a motor car designed expressly to retain a lasting appeal through changing fads and fashions. Its timeless styling reflects a unique and striking dignity. Lincoln Continental for 62 wears a limited edition look for elegant or like look of elegance that time will not dim. In quality of construction too, Lincoln Continental stands alone. It is crafted at a pace which permits extra attention to the details, which being greater value and satisfaction to its owners or to its owner. Its sheer excellence and performance are attained through painstaking care during production and the most rigorous testing and retesting programs in the industry. It is this extra effort and time which raises Lincoln Continental reliability standards so high that it's the only American automobile uh, warranted for two years or 24,000 miles, asterisk, uh, twice as long as any other American car. So back then it was 12,000 miles for the most part. Here is Lincoln Continental for 1962, an unmatched investment in motoring, value, and satisfaction, an automobile designed in every way to endure. Uh, there is another breakdown here also kind of uh, on the right. It says, um, the 1962 Lincoln Continental, your finest investment in tomorrow is the promise carried by Lincoln Continental for 62. It is designed to give a lasting satisfaction with a beauty and dignity of styling that is not uh, transient or subject to the changing whims of fashion, a beauty backed by custom craftsmanship that brooks no compromise with quality. The emphasis is on precision during the production of this fine motor car. 
not speed, but accuracy, is the governing overruling factor during its construction. Each step of the process is checked, tested, and tested again. This is your surest forecast of remarkable reliability and durability of long, long life. It predicts unusual resale value. This is the reason behind Lincoln Continental's sheer excellence of performance, the kind of performance that simply cannot be duplicated by the normal, hurried production techniques. It is the reason why Lincoln Continental alone among American cars is warranted for two years or 24,000 miles. It is the reason why Lincoln Continental is your wisest investment. So 62 Lincoln Continental front three quarter side view, I guess I'll call it. Uh, Here we see the front three quarter shot for the most part. I guess it's more of a side view. This is in Sultan White. Seeing this view allows for us to kind of see that front end. And this is from the dealership brochure, which is in my collection. That's the easiest tell from 61 to 62, you know, looking at that front grill. But we also, as other people have pointed out to me, the other tell is that the wheel covers are slightly different. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, The antenna is still in the back, so it cannot be seen here in this image. You see the, uh, the slimmer white walls, again, getting rid of what we saw in 61. Here is the convertible, so when we compare it, looks very similar. One thing to note, which we will talk about, is early 62 models. I mentioned this in the 1961 aesthetics video. They did also have the keyhole cover, so it does look like in this illustration or photo, uh, it does look like that is there. And then here is a top and bottom comparison. Very elegant. I love 61, 62, 63s. I I think 63 is probably my favorite out of the three because of some of the changes, the refinements. I love the grills. The, um, The dash had some changes and things like that. We'll cover that down the road. But If I had to go 61, 62, my personal preference is I like the 62 more. I love blue. That that powder blue that we see there is fantastic. Here is a 1961 versus 62 Lincoln Continental comparison. These are various Lincoln Motor Company dealer brochures, uh, as well as I think the two on the left are press photos. I forgot to add that. Kind of hard to find, but I, of course, am the Lincoln addict, so I'm constantly looking But you can kind of see here on the top, you've got a convertible front three quarter. You can see, obviously, the front end is different. Um, You know, you look, of of course, to the right. Many people would have a hard time telling these cars apart from the side. One of the key things is, obviously, the star is gone from the hubcap or wheel cover. If you look at the sedan difference from uh, on the bottom, you basically can see, obviously, a wider white wall tire on the left. The 62 is on the right. You've got the slimmer white wall. And um, it was hard to find some good photos to really do the comparison here. But I wanted for you to at least to kind of see that, hey, for the most part, it's the same car in in many ways. The front end in the back area above the bumper are kind of the easiest tells, in my opinion. 62 Lincoln Continental Convertible. This is a press photo and PR information. Uh, the unique Lincoln Continental convertible, the only four-door convertible made in America for 1962, has a new front grille and a matching rear grill type panel. Added customer conveniences and numerous engineering refinements are incorporated into the 62 model. Newly designed cloth roof supports in a squared-off rear window give the car the appearance of a four-door sedan when the top is up. So... I think that's less noticeable to people because typically when you see a convertible, the top is down. So, uh, but pretty cool that they were, you know, taking feedback from their, their customers and, you know, running with it. And I don't know who the person is, someone they hired, obviously they would hire, you know, different ladies back then, uh, typically, or, or males, I guess, in, in some uh, photos, but this is definitely a cool photo. The car's parked against the curb. And you can see the tag on it, 1962. We see some of the differences in the back that we'll talk about. And, of course, here's the rear antenna. Here are some better 
press photos. Now, some of these came directly from Lincoln Motor Company. They do have a press area on their website where they um, have some higher quality images, and, and these are some of my favorite. Uh, I did notice, because I have a 64 press kit, that they did like to use some of the white cars in uh, some of their photos. And these are cool because these are color photos. But you can imagine a lot of what they did was black and white because they were sending it to newspapers and, and various publications that, uh, you know, color print was super expensive, I'm sure, back then. And they knew it was probably going to get printed in black and white. But um, the left photo, again, you can kind of see it's on a turntable. We slightly see in both photos the interior appears to be blue, um, which I absolutely love, but just super elegant. I like the antenna in the back, and um, I think it's just a cool thing. Of course, it eventually moves next year uh, in 63 to the front, but uh, I think that's one standout item there for me. The 62 Lincoln Continental Press photo continued, so here is a photo of a sedan uh, possibly an illustration, and sometimes it's hard for me to tell. It does look like a, a drawing, but um, you can see the front end has the longer rectangles, which is synonymous with 62 with the front grille. That will also match, that we'll see in a moment, the, the rear. Here are ad additional press photos that I found um, from Lincoln Motor Company, and this is super cool. Uh, someone, I think I may have shared one of these, someone may have chimed in. This might have been in, the, I'm guessing, is in that little, um, the area where Ford had their space, of course, in Michigan. I haven't been to the Henry Ford Museum. I want to go to that whole little town that eventually was kind of set up, but uh, if anybody happens to know where these photos were taken, I would love to know. I'm assuming they're on the uh, Ford premises. Super cool. Uh, more than likely, this is the same um, car that it was either illustrated or was um, photographed, but uh, it's just definitely elegance. Uh, something I'm not going to necessarily talk about right now, but um, you know, one thing that always sticks out to me is how the rear view mirror is different, and we'll talk more about that stuff Um in the future, but what I mean by different is the way the mount is uh, versus how it kind of changes too. Okay, here is a front three quarter shot from Hemmings. So you can obviously go on Google and you can type in 1962 Lincoln Continental Convertible and you're going to find different images. I tried to find some of the better images, but it was definitely difficult when you're actually looking for them. What we can see here is in person, we see the front um, grille with the longer rectangles and uh, the white color with the darker maroon interior convertible. This wasn't the best photo. Um, and this photo, w w the reason why I wanted to show it is I believe, and I, I think when I blew it up, it was kind of hard to tell. This car does appear to have the keyhole cover and it does appear to have the longer, I'll call it the whip, on the end of the L that I talked about with the 61 video. And I think I'll hit upon it here as well, because some of the 62 models received the badging in the back with the longer L, with the kind of the little loop, as well as the keyhole cover for the doors. Here is a 1962 Lincoln Continental side view. Now, this was taken in Clearwater at a dealership, uh, the Carlisle Porter Motor Company, a Lincoln Mercury dealership in Clearwater. Uh, this photo has floated around for some time. It definitely a different elegance back in that era with these dealerships. Chris Dunn, Lincoln Land owner, and I have spoken about this car. Unfortunately, this car no longer is in existence. He does have some parts off of it, including the dash plaque uh, with the original owner's name, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, note the dealership no longer exists. It was replaced with a newer car dealership, which I think is like an auto nation or something. And I was going to put a side-by-side -side photo of that, but I just couldn't stomach it. Here's a photo from Ford Authority. They do a lot of different articles. Uh, this is a photo, kind of hard to find one with the top up, but this is a black car, the passenger front three-quarter um, shot. Uh, we can see it has a red tag on it. It has the bias ply tires. And we can see that uh, the top is obviously up. Here is the side view of that same car. I 
uh, wasn't prepared to really talk about. I know some people love the bias fly tires. I think it brings them back to a certain point of their life, you know, when cars had those bias flies. Many people would tell you radials, I don't have the scientific proof behind it, but I, I believe radials are more safe. But I do understand that people would want to have, or, or the radials are, but I understand that some people would want to have the bias fly tires. There are companies, I believe, like Coker, that, that manufacture a tire to look like a uh, bias ply. But uh, what it looks like is they have bias ply tires on here. It's kind of hard to tell in this photo with the uh, windows down if you guys want to comment on anything in terms of the convertible top, which I read through earlier with the top up. But I do believe it was in this section right here that it kind of looks a little bit different. But you know, every time I go to compare this kind of stuff, you know, if I'm at a, an event where there's the Lincolns, you know, a lot of times the tops are down. So it's harder to really kind of zone in or hone in, if you will, on that item that, that Lincoln talks about in their um, the information I read a little bit earlier. Here's a rear three-quarter shot. We'll take a little bit closer view here in just a moment of how this pattern in the back changes. And, of course, it matches. If you look at those longer uh, rectangles, that's, um, you know, a, a tie-in to the front end of the car. Here is a 62 versus a 61 from Ford Authority and Concept Cars with a Z. They have some pretty cool photos out there. The top is the 62 with the top up. The bottom is from um, Concept Cars, I believe it was, and that is a 61 with the top up. You can see what sticks out is on the wheel covers. The Lincoln emblem is removed in 62, and it says Continental uh, in that you know, pattern around the center of the wheel cover, whereas in 61, it did not, and it simply had the Lincoln emblem. The front end obviously sticks out here, but if you were looking side by side at these cars, they would be a little bit harder to tell apart versus the keyhole cover, which we can see here on the 61, the wheel covers, it does have the wider whites, the front end's a little bit different, but other than those things, if they were directly Side by side, they certainly would be tough to tell apart. Here's a couple photos from Classic Cars Import. And uh, beautiful color. Love this blue 62 Lincoln Continental Convertible. What we can see here is obviously uh, some pretty cool photos. We have the antenna in the back. And if we look here at the pattern, the, the way I can always tell is those longer rectangles. I know I keep saying that they match the front with the longer rectangles. We could see in this photo as well. A um, little bit of changes, of course, that I read through earlier too with the Lincoln Star and things like that. But for the most part, if you just look at the pattern, if you're only seeing the back end of the car, uh, you can you can look at that, that pattern there and you can tell what car it is, what year. Here is a better image, classic and sports cars, uh, as well as James Mann. And this is the rear grill. And uh, this one's in obviously better condition uh, because these, this paint or vinyl, I want to say it's paint, it tends to uh, diminish over time, right, as you would expect. So what you're seeing here is, uh, you know, a, a lot nicer version of what we're seeing here because a lot of these are faded away. Uh, and, of course, we are looking at the other difference here that – wasn't going to spend a lot of time on, but I, I mentioned this in the past. If you look at the differences between the convertibles and sedans, I did a whole episode on it. The convertible, the deck lid opens in reverse. There's no keyhole. Uh, and that's simply because you can't insert a key and turn it and open it. That's only on the sedan. So if you look closely at this photo, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see that this is a sedan based upon the keyhole that's here. Uh, here are classic and sport car images. And we can see the difference. So um, this is 62 on the left. This is 61 that I showed. The egg crate um, wording that was used earlier in some of the Lincoln verbiage and, and the brochures and whatnot, you can clearly see it is different here um, with the, the setup and, and how they did it. 62 Lincoln Continental quarter panel scripting. So 62 and 63, for the most part, is what you see here. 
And if you are listening, the bottom line is it's the same font. However, the L has, you know, if you think about cursive and you do your L and you have that little whip, if you will, at the end of it, it was a little bit longer on 61 and some of the early 62s. And I talked about that in the past. Someone had mentioned, I think it was Todd, had mentioned that it could have been people that were like drying their car with a towel. I don't know if people used chamois back then. Uh, or maybe they were going through car washes or maybe they were, I, I don't know how often people washed their cars back then or if they went to like a car wash uh, where someone hand washed it. But people were talking about when they would use like a rag or something on their car, it would get caught in that little bit of the L. And I could see that happening. And that is what maybe feedback from it caused Lincoln to say, hey, let's change it slightly. There's a hotel, I'm forgetting the name of it, in the Orlando area where it's themed after cars. And um, there's one of the buildings is Continental, and it's that same scripting. It's one of the universal, um, I can't remember, one of the universal properties. I did include this again. Uh, again, thanks to Todd Allen. He kind of really reinforced, and many of the Lincoln Continental Owners Club, LCOC for short, uh, many of those uh, different folks, including Chris Dunn, have contributed to, I think there's like a, a book that they have that can be used for judging or like, you know, the true details of it. So a lot of those folks, I got to give them credit. Uh, Jim Ayers has been great as well. So many people have helped me learn a lot of these things, but the 61 scripting uh, was used uh, through 62 and that was through 1113 to 61. So that gets a little confusing, but remember the 62 models would have started like August, September building and they would have ran um, of 61 and they would have ran through 62, right? So it's kind of that weird overlap. Uh, in 62, 63, for the most part, this is the um, script that we all know. Again, the L is a little bit shorter. Chris Dunn has really reinforced that to me. Here's 64 through 73 and 74 through 76 for those kind of scoring at home. The red is my 65. The Lincoln Continental key cover. Note this 61 feature made it onto some 62 models as mentioned in the 61 video. This is an image from the 62 dealership brochure. And I just wanted to reinforce this because if you take a look here, this does have the keyhole has that little notch in it where you can kind of put your nail or a key, I would presume, and you can kind of push it up and then put your insert the key. Todd Allen provided this, which is from the 61 to 62 Lincoln Continental Authenticity Manual is what it's called. Bottom line is cars built before 91561 have the keyhole cover, the square bezel and cover. 62 Lincoln Continental sedans and convertibles both feature the same wheel covers which was also used in 63. This is an image of it. No Lincoln stars in the middle. Lincoln on top and Continental on the bottom in those capital letters, side with the valve stem hole. So I believe uh, every wheel cover on the Continental side. So if you're looking at this image on YouTube where it says Continental, above that is your valve stem hole. Lincoln Continental white wall tire. So again, we're talking about the design aesthetics for 62. The 62 uh, white wall itself is much more slim. We talked about that when I read through some of the Lincoln literature earlier than what you will see with a stock 61. If you haven't checked out my 61 video, please do so. It's very similar to this, but remember in 61, there were massive changes from the 60 model. So that, you know, was obviously the big change. These are kind of more minor things. This image is technically from a 63 brochure, but you kind of get the idea. 61 versus 62. So this is an image from uh, Lincoln Motor Company. And what I did is you can barely see the 63 model here. I kind of just cropped it just to show you the 61 and 62. The key callouts here is the keyhole cover. Uh, you're going to see here it's, it's on the 61. It's not here on 62. And the wheel covers, very tough to see in this black and white image, but we can clearly see the Lincoln uh, insignia here in the middle. It is not here on 62. Lincoln Continental key cover, rest in peace, Tim Nill. 
Uh, this was Tim's 62 that I eventually helped um, sell. And uh, as I mentioned in the past, it is a 62, but it's an early 62 model. Um, I don't have a photo of the VIN plate on it. And uh, this, this car did have, of course, the keyhole cover. A few additional details and then we'll wrap this up. What I did is I scanned any images of my uh, collection that I couldn't find on the web. So this one's a little bit weird if you happen to be looking at it. It's like I scanned it and it had a weird little effect to it. So it kind of looks like the grill is uh, going a little crazy there. But this is presenting Lincoln Continental for 62. And it just starts off with its hallmark is surpassing good taste. And this is where some of the information that I read through earlier comes directly from the brochure. The car that cannot be outdated by the calendar. A lot of these images out there, I don't have a high resolution scanner. I certainly have ways to scan, but in the past, um, some of the websites like Automotive Miles Post and stuff, they probably use some high end scanners. And a lot of these images come from, for instance, the dealership brochures that you see kind of floating around the web. Uh, here is a 62 in Sultan White. Uh, here's another photo. I always like this photo. Kind of cool. Uh, the lady sitting there. And uh, my favorite thing about seeing these is, like, this is the car brand new. Like, this is the car, like, literally the day that they hired the folks to come sit in these cars and take the photos. Like, these things are as pure as they can be. You know, maybe they were driven a few miles, but... They really capture the essence of a vanilla Lincoln Continental, right? Brand new. Uh, this Lincoln Continental four-door sedan in black cherry metallic. And then someone showing uh, the the switches there. You can see it does have the, uh, the vent that is not automated, so you have to twist it to open the vents. Another great photo, it's got the Town & Country magazine laying on the front seat. You've got the uh, cruise control, also known as speed control. And uh, this says, form beautifully follows function. And you've got just an awesome sedan here, looking fresh. These are often available on eBay if you're looking to buy any of these. Here's a convertible. I used this image earlier, fashioned for flair, looking motor company brochure again. Uh, with a touch of the or press of the button, you can put the top up or down. Of course, a limited look of luxury. So really reinforcing uh, with these awesome photos, the uh, the luxurious nature of these cars. Uh, here we got 62 Lincoln Continental additional details. So you've got the craftsmanship uh, reinforcing as well as the two year warranty. Here is some of the standard equipment that they show in the brochure and some of the optional equipment. So technically the air condition was optional and uh, of course speed control was as well. So they, they kind of break that down. This is a rare color Jamaican yellow. Forget if it's, I think it's Jamaica yellow. Uh, it's kind of a rare color. Uh, this is where oftentimes I have to refer back to, I know Chris Dunn has different resources on Lincoln Land's website. You could refer here to the different fabrics and, and colors and things like that. Um, you know, a lot of people think I've memorized everything. I have memorized a lot, but oftentimes if I, if I want to get down and I want to double check a detail, I go to these books or some of the other resources that I built for myself, kind of a data, a database, if you will. And then 62 Lincoln Continental, your finest investment in tomorrow. And again, some more of that information that I read through earlier. Then also on the right side, you have the specifications, which I always uh, definitely appreciate. So the summary of changes from 61 to 62, front grille and bumper. It's the easiest way to tell a 62 from a 61 is just looking for those rectangles. The rear grille design above the bumper matches the front grille, so those rectangles, if you will, direct correlation to the front end of the car. The wheel covers, also known as hubcaps, you can see those from the side. Jim Ayers and other people have always pointed out to be Todd Allen as well, even to, um, uh, Chris Dunn. That hey, if you if you're look if you hone in on those wheel covers, which by the way they can be changed, but if you've got a stock car, it's you're going to be able to tell from the side is it a one or a two. The keyhole cover no longer after early production, as I mentioned, the slimmer white walls as well. These are a few of the ads, certainly not all of them. 
And that's where some of those images came from earlier, the Lincoln Motor Company. Uh, pretty cool. You got a sedan, a sedan, and a convertible. I have some of these also from old magazines framed at my house. So I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to say thank you so much. It took me a little while to get this episode out. I don't intend all of the episodes. Like, remember, my goal is two episodes per month in 2024. I'm also working on an interview with someone that I've wanted to have on for a while, and I'm super excited about that. So I'm hoping that's going to be the next episode. I really appreciate all the support. I got to thank all of our, uh, our, our our folks that partner with us. Our two main title sponsors are Jeff at Devious Customs. Again, DeviousCustoms.com. If you want to customize your Lincoln or just see what he has for sale, he's got shirts and hats as well. I think one of the shirts has a Lincoln on it. Don't forget Colorado Custom Wheels, Michael and team. I would argue the best customer service in the business. I love my Lincoln replica wheels on my 64. And remember, you don't have to get 20s and 22s and so on. I've got 17-inch wheels, and they bring a lot of joy to me when I see them, and I can't thank Michael and team enough. Love the center caps. More to come on those with the upcoming video. Stay on the rise, everyone. Have a great weekend, and remember, lincolnaddict.com if you want to buy stickers. I appreciate you all. Take care.